In this video, we are going to discuss how diabetes affects the feet. The diabetic foot includes diabetic neuropathy and peripheral vascular disease. Both of these can have serious outcomes. Estimates run as high as 26 million Americans suffer from diabetes, both diagnosed and undiagnosed. Furthermore, 25% of people with diabetes will develop a foot ulcer during their lifetime. Over half of these ulcers will become infected and require hospitalization and 20% of these infections will result in amputation. Appropriate foot care is one of the most overlooked aspects of the diabetic's daily regimen. The feet along with the eyes, heart and kidneys all have the potential for serious consequences in a disease that many do not take seriously and choose to ignore. What are the symptoms of diabetic foot pain as the disease relates to the foot? Two major events occur as the disease progresses. The first is neuropathy. Many diabetics eventually lose sensation in their feet. This is known as diabetic neuropathy. There are three types. The first is autonomic neuropathy. This this is the simplest and earliest type of neuropathy. It is seen as nothing more than dry skin, usually accompanied with athlete's foot. The skin on the bottom of the feet, particularly in the heel area, will be very dry and scaly. The problem here is that if the condition is not identified properly, it can lead to breakdown of the skin and infection. The next type of neuropathy in the diabetic is sensory neuropathy which presents itself as relentless burning, tingling, or numbness in the diabetic foot. The problem with neuropathy is multifaceted. With lack of sensation on the bottom of the diabetic foot, a person is at risk for stepping on something such as a broken piece of glass in the kitchen and not even knowing it. The area then can become infected and at that point if the patient's blood sugars are not under control and the circulation to the area is compromised, the body is unable to heal the infection and in many cases can lead to amputation. Factually, diabetes is the major factor in over 50% of amputations performed in the United States each year. Another problem with neuropathy can be a relentless feeling of burning, tingling or numbness that is not alleviated by anything the diabetic does. Diabetic neuropathy usually occurs in both feet and will occur continuously, day and night. There are various medications on the market for diabetic neuropathy, all with varying degrees of success. Lyrica is probably the most popularly prescribed medication for diabetic neuropathy. The third type of neuropathy is motor neuropathy. In this situation, elevated blood sugars will affect the nerves that innervate the muscles of the foot and lower leg and will cause changes in the way the muscles function. This abnormal function may lead to a more rapid onset of hammer toes and bunions as well as trophic changes in the muscles themselves, leading to arthritic changes within the feet. The other diabetes-related factor to the feet is peripheral vascular disease. Over time, diabetes causes the arteries going into the feet to essentially become clogged and in doing so reduces the blood flow to the feet. This creates various problems the most common being the inability of the tissue of the feet to get adequate nutrition. The skin becomes dry, thin, scaly, we lose fat on the bottom of the feet, and the bones become demineralized. This then makes the foot more susceptible to infection and difficulty in walking. Adequate blood flow is necessary to the feet in order to help heal wounds. If a person cuts themselves or steps on a broken piece of glass, we need adequate blood flow to the area to bring nutrients to repair the wound. In a diabetic, this can be a problem due to lack of circulation. A foot ulcer is usually the culmination of elevated blood sugars, diabetic neuropathy and poor circulation. So, how do we protect the diabetic foot? The first thing is to control your blood sugars. No diabetic should take their disease for granted and should be proactive in their approach to their diabetes. The closer a person's blood sugars are kept to normal on a daily basis, the less damage that is being done. This is more the case in adult-onset diabetes, otherwise known as type 2 diabetes. Next is examination of the diabetic foot. A diabetic should also inspect their feet daily, both visually and by rubbing their hands along the bottom of their feet, feeling for anything that may not feel normal. 
anything questionable observations should be brought to the attention of their foot specialist immediately. For older individuals who do not bend very well, placing a mirror on the floor and lifting your foot over the mirror is a good way to visually inspect your feet. The next protection is moisturizing your feet. The feet should be hydrated daily to keep the skin soft and supple. For most people, a good hand cream will work just fine. As previously mentioned, diabetics tend to have drier skin than the general population and thus the skin is more prone to breaking down. The goal is to keep the skin from breaking down, which can lead to infection and that's what we're looking to avoid. The cream should be used daily and some individuals may have to apply the cream more than once per day. Next, proper daily hygiene, which includes washing the feet well with soap and water, including in between the toes, then drying them very well. Once again, application of good hydrating lotion is recommended immediately thereafter. This is especially important in the winter months when skin in general gets dry due to low humidity in the air. Next, proper fitting shoes are also very important. Diabetics should wear non-constricting shoes, as shoes that are too tight will cause unnecessary pressure points on the feet, which can break down and become infected. In an effort to avoid pressure points, many patients will go out and buy larger shoes. There is a fallacy with this logic. Shoes that are too big will cause the feet to have excessive motion within the shoe, which will also create friction eventually leading to breakdown of the skin. Along with a good pair of shoes, a diabetic should also have a good pair of orthotics to support their feet. When there is abnormal sensation and the patient cannot really feel the ground, the bony architecture of the foot will begin to break down. An orthotic helps keep the foot upright and prevents abnormal stresses placed upon it. Lastly, no diabetic should ever take a sharp instrument to their feet in what we refer to as bathroom surgery. If there is something on the foot that is of concern such as an ingrown nail or a painful corn, it should immediately be brought to the attention of a foot specialist. Trying to cut out an ingrown nail or trim a corn are examples of conditions that are better left to the experts. Working to keep your blood sugars controlled and paying attention to any changes in your feet is the best way to prevent foot problems down the road.